Finally, please welcome Sviat Dulyaninov from Bright Machines. All right, can you hear me? Good. Um, I know I'm the last person before the drinks and the reception, so I really appreciate your patience. And uh, I'll try to keep you entertained. Uh, just two slides and then a lot of videos of the demo. Um, I'll spend one minute on the company and one minute of our product buckets, and then four different demos that you're going to enjoy, I hope. So the first thing I want to say, um, Bright Machines, we're six years old, um, recently raised Series C. We focus and were created on the thesis of reshoring and strengthening manufacturing in the United States. What we do, we build robotic systems powered by machine learning and AI that are flexible enough to build different electronics and you know, upscale humans and build lines within the United States to build high value electronics. We already have more than 110 micro factories, that's how we call our lines, deployed around the world, but mostly in the United States, but also in Europe and Asia. Uh, we focus on the segment of what we call AI backbone or AI hardware, everything that goes into the data center, like a server, um, network equipment, data storage, or even energy storage. We are around 180 people uh, with headquarters in San Francisco. And here you can see a few recognitions from Forbes to Fast Company and Inc. and so on and so forth. Speaking about our product buckets, um, you can see five on this slide. The first one is what we call Design for Automated Assembly. That's what we are building this year. We are doing it with close partnership with NVIDIA Omniverse. This is a plugin to recommend engineers how to create battery designs so that they are easier to automate and at higher produce at higher quality. The second thing that you can see is Bright, bright uh, uh, Machines Micro Factory. That's our robotic lines. We have different types, enclosed and open, uh, but that's the hardware piece. Then you have Studio, that is, this is a development environment, how you introduce new products to the lines. Then Platform, what runs automation and collects data. And then finally, you can use that data for insights and building applications on top of it. Um, and now, I'll go through the demo part. So the first video you're going to see is about what we call smart skills. Smart skills is the brain behind uh, automation. This is uh, machine learning. This is how we navigate and inspect and how robots makes a decision what to do. So here you're going to see how we create a 3D model of a new product that arrives at our lines. This is an example of a server that goes to the data center. This, what you see, is like the 3D model we create within around four hours usually. And after we create this model and create what we call a recipe, the flow of assembly, you can see that the robot can start just putting memory modules, DIMMs into the slots. It's not going to put all the way because it's a demo, because you destroy the socket. But the idea is it does it instantly. The other thing, you can see the, see the 3D capabilities. So we change the angle to like 15 degrees or so. And within a second, robot navigates and can still place the memory module to the socket that it needs to put it to. More than that, if you even do the double stacking, it's not going to overthink it. It's going to also take a second and do the same. It doesn't really happen in production environment, but it just shows the level of flexibility. Because when you think about modern manufacturing, everybody who uses automation, they use fixtures and gigs, and like everything is fixed. This is another example of smart skills in case for inspection. This is debris detection. So we're just going to run inspection. This is like how a Brightware platform looks like. And you're going to see the debris in the areas of interest. The areas of interest in this case are the sockets for the memory modules. And you can see debris there. First of all, you wouldn't believe, but it happens. Like in manual assembly, people leave screws in the servers. And second of all, we can even see a hair. So we're going to avoid putting dim on it. This is another example of inspection. This is the second pipeline that we call uh, you know, for putting in different buckets and classification. This is going to classify dims into two things. One is open and the other is closed. And you can see that closed are in green and open are in red. And then that's how we can navigate the robot where to put them. And finally, the big difference versus any automation is the changeover time. Our changeover time is like zero to one second if we know what server type we have. This is an example of navigating to the server that is smaller, easier to assemble on the left. Then we're going to choose another server and just going to move it into the area that the camera can see. And within, so you see, like it takes a second, it's going to think a little bit. And then it can instantly put the memory modules into a new type of server, which is also unheard of because when you do the changeover in modern facilities, even if they are like, you know, top notch and you use automation, it's going to be hours usually. Um, that's on smart skills. The next demonstration I will show this is our facility in San Francisco, um, a new office we moved. 
to recently. This is another example of our microfactory. You can see Cobots that was covered like a few hours ago on one of the panels, collaborative robots, two stations. One is gonna do pick and place of a GPU and the other gonna do like 17 uh, screwing operations to put this GPU into the server uh, chassis. The GPU itself, the GPU module from NVIDIA, it weighs around 100 pounds. So right now, if you look at any assembly of those GPU modules to modern servers, it's gonna be two people and a crane to move that, like think about this, an item that costs $250,000 being assembled by two people and a crane, and like the, you know, the, uh, the price of mistake is pretty high. So we do it with the same software. You can see the cameras on the canopy above the robot. So using the same smart skills, we take GPU module and place it in the server chassis. And again, you can see nothing is fixed. This is just a trolley, so you can move it. And if you moved it before the action, the robot is gonna find the proper place and put it there. And you need to be really precise because you can damage the board. The second operation you're gonna see in this video is gonna be putting 17 screws to connect the GPU cluster board H100 to the server chassis. And it's gonna be the second cobot with a different end of arm, which is gonna be a screwdriver. And now you're gonna see how those screws gonna be connected. So you can see the screwdriver, 17 screws really hard to get into because they're like between GPUs, around GPUs, and you need to find it through vision and be really precise with your torque and pressure. So we measure all the data to be really consistent and don't break the board or any equipment. Overall, this whole system that you see on the screen right now is around $300,000. So you can imagine kind of a Ferrari being assembled uh, on, on this line. Because this is like pretty hard to get uh, for a human also because like, you know, and for the camera because of the shade and other things, but we can still get it. And more than that, this is zero scrap operation. So we guarantee that like none of the items that goes through this process would be damaged in any way. Then quickly to what I mentioned, what we call design for automated assembly. Again, this is a plugin, as I mentioned, we work with any CAD solution like Autodesk or Siemens or others through NVIDIA Omniverse, we simulate and then give recommendations. And just a quick video of like how, this is like a quick demo, of how you do the server design as an engineer. Uh, for, for instance, you think about where to place CPUs, memory modules, heat sinks, our system gonna simulate it. You can see the similar box that you saw before with the FANUC uh, robotic hand, and it's gonna take and simulate how you're gonna assemble this server. And after this, you're gonna receive as an engineer report with some insights and advice how to make it a better design. So again, we focus on DIEM memory module uh, insertion applications just to make it easier and to, the follow, to follow the same flow of the demo. And then finally, I want to finish with one last video of how we assemble energy storage units. And this is gonna be before and after. And before is how our customer assembled energy storage units that go to data centers, hospitals, schools for backup energy in one of the Asian countries. And after is how we do that with our um, robotics and AI in the state of New York. So enjoy, I hope it's gonna be really educated. There's a number of steps. You can see a human on the left. Uh, this is better insertion into slot modules. You can see the difference in speed. This is our robotic cell that made it really fast and high quality, really consistent. The next step is like uh, rib module insertion. Also, you can see the difference of like manual versus automated within our next cell in the process. Then there's another cell that goes through the conveyor. It's cell module insertion. Also, you can see the difference, similar logic. And then finally, this is like battery bus bar placement. Another thing, which is also like precision is very different and accuracy is different. So I will stop there. I have seven seconds left, so it's perfect timing. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks for organization of the event and enjoy the reception.